Friends, uh, please be seated. I'll give you some exercise and have you stand up again in a minute. Friends, parents and family, members of the faculty, distinguished guests, and most importantly, the graduates of 2012. Welcome to the graduate commencement ceremony of the University of Scranton. In fact, welcome to the 60th graduate ceremony of the Graduate School of the University of Scranton. I am Hal Bailey, Provost and Chief Academic Officer of the University, and it is my privilege and pleasure to preside over this traditional symbol of academic attainment. We will begin this morning with the invocation which will be offered by Father Rick Malloy of the Society of Jesus. After the invocation, please join the University Choir in singing the Star Spangled Banner. The words are printed in the commencement program. Father Malloy. Again, welcome. It's good to see so many wonderful young adults, and maybe not so young adults, ready to commence a new era of their professional lives. There is so much for which we thank God, especially no more tuition. We, <laughs> I can't do anything about the loans. We thank God this day for all the gifts we've been given, especially an education imbued with Catholic and Jesuit ideals and values. Dean Jeff Welsh and the faculty have worked creatively to integrate these values and ideals into the marrow of the bones of our graduate school programs. Those values and ideals call us to live our lives in relation to God and others. We entrust our lives to our compassionate and challenging God and ask for the graces and guidance we need to put our education at the service of our sisters and brothers throughout the world. So let us pray. We thank you, O loving and abiding God. We thank you for the gift the University of Scranton has been, is, and will be to so many. In the Quran we read, God is with those who patiently persevere. We thank you for helping us persevere and for the opportunity and privilege of being able to earn graduate degrees in our fields of interest. Jesuit teachings call us to be fires that kindle other fires, to be men and women for and with others, to be those who will transform our world in the light of your justice and love. We thank you, O oh God, for those who love us, our families and our teachers, our classmates and coworkers. Many of them, especially spouses and children, have helped us arrive successfully at this day. Those who love us, show us your face. The Hebrew prophet Micah proclaims, we are to do justice, love tenderly, and walk humbly with our God. The walls of Brennan Hall have engraved on them the words of Luke's gospel, where Jesus teaches, from everyone to whom much is given, much will be required. And from the one to whom much has been entrusted, even more will be demanded. Help us to share and multiply our graces and our gifts, our talents and our treasures with all, especially the poor and needy. And as I extend this blessing, please feel free to pray in the faith tradition in which you root your soul. May our good and gracious God grant you all joy for the journey, courage for the choices, faith for the freeing, hope for the healing, and love for the lasting. Many of us ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please be seated. Thank you, Father Rick. And thanks to the University Concert Band and the University Singers, all under the direction of Ms. Cheryl Boga. And again, welcome to the commencement ceremony, the graduate commencement ceremony of the University of Scranton. As I mentioned, this ceremony represents two hallmarks for the graduate school. It is, first of all, its 60th, and secondly, this is the largest group of graduate students ever to gain degrees from the university. <laughs> graduate work is truly professional work. And most of you are already uh, engaged in the field that you have studied. And the rest of you wish you were. <laughs> you have thus successfully committed yourself to professional improvement while possessed already of a deep knowledge of the discipline. Your diligence and experience challenge the faculty to share in the task. And we all celebrate that challenge. But there is more that we celebrate today for the faculty in the university have challenged you to share in a Jesuit education. You have been gifted with talent and commitment, and you've made the most of it. But you are also in a profession. To be in a profession is to be more than an employee. It is to profess a commitment to others and to the common good. This vocation lies at the heart of a Jesuit education. It lies at the heart of what we have tried to develop during your involvement here at Scranton. So as you leave today, as you walk from my left as a student to my right as a graduate, take this Jesuit commitment with you and strengthen your profession. That is, strengthen your commitment to others and to the common good. This is a heavy task, but a satisfying one and we wish you all well. We will now proceed to the presentation of the candidate for honorary degree. Matthew Geiger of the class of 1981 and a member of the Board of Trustees will read the citation for Maury M. Myers, a candidate for the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Will Mr. Myers and the Reverend Kevin P. Quinn of the Society of Jesus and President of the University of Scranton, please step forward. And will Mr. Geiger go to the other podium? One of Pennsylvania's most respected lawyers, among Scranton's most revered community leaders, a scholar, philanthropist, and civic activist, Maury Myers inspires us through a lifetime of examples of the Ignatian traditions of discernment, intellect, imagination, and leadership and service. Maury's impressive career includes distinguished service in the public sector and work as a leading private practice attorney. He served as general counsel to the late Pennsylvania Governor Robert P. Casey and as general counsel for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania where he directed the legal staff of the executive agencies of the Commonwealth and supervised more than 400 attorneys. During the civil rights movement, Maury was among the few lawyers who traveled to the South as a volunteer to provide legal services to those engaged in civil dis disobedience, specifically in St. Augustine, Florida in 1964 and in Mississippi in 1965. It was a life-changing experience. He was a partner in the Philadelphia-based firm of Schneider, Harrison, Siegel, and Lewis before becoming a founding partner of the Scranton law firm of Myers, Breyer, and Kelly. A practitioner in state and federal courts, Maury's extraordinary skill in complex litigation has been recognized throughout his professional life. Likewise, his service to community has been acknowledged through numerous awards, including the Governor Robert P. Casey Medal and the B'nai B'rith Americanism Award. 
Maury's valued ex expertise extends from courtrooms to communities. He was a consultant to the President's Commission on Campus Unrest, Chief Counsel to the Pennsylvania Milk, Pennsylvania's Milk Control Commission, and Chairman of the he Hearing Committee of the Disciplinary Board of the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. He serves pr frequently as a mediator in the United States Federal Court. Maury has served on numerous boards, including the university's Board of Trustees, and in the leadership role as chair of the Commitment to Excellence campaign at Scranton. A scholar and teacher, he has taught on United States Constitution and federalism for undergraduates at his alma mater, Yale University, Hamilton College, and Rutgers University, among others. He has also taught adult learners at the Schemmel Forum at the University of Scranton. Today, we honor Maury Myers for his passionate dedication to the rule of law and to social justice. His intellect, vision, and leadership are legendary in Northeastern Pennsylvania. Therefore, we, the President and trustees of the University of Scranton, in solemn convocation assembled and in accord with our chartered authority declare Maury M. Myers, Esquire, Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa, that he may enjoy all the rights and privilege of this, our highest honor. We have issued these letters patent under our hand and the corporate seal of the university on this 26th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2012. Christopher M. Condren, Chair, Board of Trustees, Kevin P. Quinn, Society of Jesus, President. I now have the pleasure of presenting to you Dr. Maury M. Myers, who will offer the commencement address. Yep. Dr. Myers. Thank you, Hal, and thank you, Matt, for that highly exaggerated citation. Um, I quarrel a little bit with that philanthropist reference. I think Father Quinn snuck that in as a campaign solicitation. But uh, I've had a, and my family has had a long, deep, and warm relationship with this university. My father-in-law, Morris Gelb, received an honorary doctorate here over 25 years ago. Morris came from Hungary at the age of eight without any English and without any money, grew up in Old Forge, came to the predecessor in name of this university, St. Thomas College, was befriended by the legendary Frank O'Hara register, registrar, who gave him the financial assistance to complete his studies here. Morris returned that in many ways and many times, including his creation of the Chair of Judaic Studies here at the university. And then remarkably, in her 90s, my mother-in-law, Morris uh, May Gelb, received an honorary degree. Now I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. And the secret is that I know that most commencement speakers and speeches are long since forgotten. But you may wanna return what I'm about to tell you. And that is when May was approaching 100 years old, I asked her, How, what's the explanation? You're so sturdy. You have all your teeth. Your hearing is good. Your vision is good. You're out every day helping others. Give me the secret. And she said, there are two things, and here it is. I don't drink water and I don't exercise. <laughs> and then my wife, Sandra, she received an honorary degree here. She was on the Board of Trustees and the, its Vice Chair, Chairman of the Academic Affairs Committee, and is now a Senior Fellow for Institutional, International, and Civic Projects, and Director of the very successful Schemmel Forum, which is an enrichment program for adults. 
I myself, as you've heard, have had a connection with this university. I was on the Board of Trustees, and I was a co-chair with my good friend, the late Jim Haggerty, of a capital projects uh, drive here. But the truth is that that campaign was done entirely by the then president, Father Bill Byron. And I want to just reference Father Bill Byron, who somewhere is in the audience here today. Uh, he's been a solver of so many problems in our family. And uh, yesterday was his 85th birthday. But most, probably most interesting, is my son David, our son David. During his junior year in high school, he came to us and said, I think I've exhausted the high school experience. We had no idea how to deal with that. So we, we were in a quandary. And so we said, David, you know Father Byron, solver of so many problems, go talk to him. He went to Father Byron, and Father Byron said that we have a program, it's rare, and it's uh, very special, that students can come here after their junior year in high school for a year, and they go on to somewhere else. David did that. And then unwilling to continue with the rigors and demands of a university Scranton course of study, he transferred to Yale. And from there, he went on to graduate school at Columbia and Harvard, and today is the chair of the history department at UCLA, which is the largest department, history department in the world, and one of its preeminent. And that's all because of his one year at the University of Scranton. God knows what if he had gone here for four years. Uh, uh, enough of the family lore. I want to talk to you today, graduates, about the prominence of higher education, its role, the most serious problem I believe we face in this country, and what you should be doing about it. Our founders believed greatly in education and expected that it would be enlightenment to all the masses. And the creators of the Constitution fully expected that those who served would be men, unfortunately at that time and for 140 years, that was tragic, uh, would be men of value and would have received a college education. So the American people were young and new world. And they weren't bound by the traditions the predispositions, the habits, the pre prejudices, the notions of the old world. In England, there was a hostility to education. The aristocracy there did not want to uh, make available to the working people any kind of advancement. But we were an ambitious and of modest origins, unbound by birth, by class by tradition, and so education became an emphasis. And we adopted Thomas Jefferson's natural aristocracy that said we want in our public life those people of real values. So we're embedded from the beginning with higher education. And where are we today? We have over 5,000 institutions of higher learning in this country. England may have 100. Denmark has five. More than 17 million people enrolled in some program of studies in our college and universities. Now we ask, why? What is the role of higher, of higher education? It is first or to impart knowledge. And that knowledge comes from to a large extent from research done at universities and colleges, gathered by professors and then imparted to the students. And the second role of higher education is to give training for specialization. 
And we see it here today. We have nurses, we have teachers, we have business graduates, we have physical therapists. But I want to submit to you that there is something considerably beyond just that specialization. Um, for example, you nurses. If you were apprenticed in a hospital for an equivalent period of time, maybe you would have acquired the same, almost the same professional competence. And if you business people used as your campus a business itself, you probably would be the equal of where you are today in terms of business skills. We note that two of our leading entrepreneurs of our era were Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Bill Gates left Harvard after a year, and Steve Jobs withdrew from Reed College in Portland, Oregon after a semester. So there's something beyond just specialization and knowledge. And it doesn't matter whether you are online students or traditional students here, whether you're in the chat room or in, you're in the student center, whether you've continued right on from your undergraduate program to your graduate studies, or you deferred it for a dec decade or more. And what is that that you were learning? Maybe you didn't even realize it. You were learning to become a citizen. And by that I mean a participatory citizen. Much of your life, you've been subjects. As we grew up in our family unit, we were directed and disciplined by our elders in our primary and secondary school and even in our uh, undergraduate and graduate schools. There was that kind of control. But now you are a citizen. And what is the relevance of that? The relevance is that Justice Louis Brandeis said, the most important officer in our society is a citizen. And as my wife has said regularly, and I'm not sure if she's the creator of it or where the attribution should be, but she said, being a citizen is not a spectator sport. So what do I say is the problem that you as citizens should be tackling? In my opinion, the most important problem in this country is not terrorism. It's not energy dissipation. It's not global warming. It's not infectious disease. It's not even anxieties by parents and grandparents over college admissions. It is as important as they all are except the last. It is in a single word disparity. The gap between, on the one hand, the haves and the have mores and those who have little and have nothing. And how does that manifest itself? In hunger, in 50 million Americans without adequate health care insurance, in disparity in sentencing and punishment with racial overtones. By that I mean, uh, just by way of illustration, that the punishment for use of crack cocaine more prevalently used by our black Americans, is 18 times as severe as the punishment for cocaine used by our white middle and upper class citizens, with the same consequences, the same composition, the same intact. And until recently, that punishment was 100 times as severe. And I'm talking about disparity in housing I'm talking about disparity in education. I'm talking about disparity in availability of credit and banking uh, services. In a word, I'm talking about disparity of opportunity. We know what the problem is. I just recently read that in this country, the increase in income from the year 2009 to 2010 of that increase, and that's the latest study, 93% of it went to the upper 1%. So we know what to do about it, too, except we've closed our eyes. We've, uh, uh, we've gone from 
serving the public good to our own private interest. And if there are any skeptics in the audience who are challenging what I'm saying, I am certain that if we don't tackle the issue of disparity, resentment will grow and that will increase political instability. So citizens, what do I want you to do? The first thing is, of course, recognize that there is disparity. There's disparity in wealth, there's disparity in talent, there's disparity in health, there's disparity in good luck. But there is one instance in our political process, we're all equal. That's the right to vote. So the first thing is, get registered and vote. But that's only the beginning. From there on, follow what Alexis de Tocqueville said in the 1830s when he was giving, here visiting this country and providing his commentary on his observations of America, where he said, I see that the American people are comfortable in their service, not only at the highest level, the national levels, but to the local levels. And that means some of you go out and seek public office in your city, borough, township, uh, councils, your school boards. And if you're not willing to or intimidated by the process of the elect election, volunteer and assert yourself on all those authorities that exist in health, in education, in rehabilitation. And if you don't want to commit yourself to that, then look back at the, how successful causes have been in this country. It's over 50 years ago that a young African-American minister in his 30s moved forward quite successfully the struggle for equality. But what Martin Luther King did was not just that, but he gave confidence for us to serve in the causes that we choose. And we've been successful. We've had an anti-war cause. We've had the feminist cause. We've had environmental uh, cause. And most recently, the Occupy Wall Street. So if we don't tackle disparity, then I say, that all of the wonderful education you've received and all of the kind efforts and achievements of all of those causes that we've spoken about will add up to nothing but historical nonsense. You'll never accomplish all you set out to do, for there is no such thing as completeness in human affairs. But your objective should be to move very considerably towards that goal. It was Plato who said, the good of education is that it enable us, enables us to act nobly. Act nobly, congratulations, and good luck. Dr. Myers, Maury, thank you for that commencement address. I think it got summed up much better by the audience than anything I could say. But thank you very, very much. We now proceed to the conferral of the graduate degrees. The candidates will first be presented by Dr. W. Jeffrey Welsh, Dean of the College of Graduate and Continuing Education. Good morning. This time has finally come. Will the candidates for the degree Doctor of Physical Therapy please rise? Please be seated. 
Will the candidates for the degree Master of Arts please rise? Will the candidates for the degree Master of Business Administration please rise? Will the candidates for the degree Master of Health Administration please rise? Will the candidates for the degree Master of Science please rise? Will the candidates for the degree Master of Science in Nursing please rise? Will all the candidates please rise? <laughs> Reverend Father President, as Dean of the College of Graduate and Continuing Education, I have the honor to present 59 candidates for doctoral degrees and 762 candidates for master's degrees. They have successfully completed all requirements for the degrees as prescribed in the Graduate Studies Catalog. They have passed their examinations and they are hereby recommended by the faculty and me for the degrees as noted. In virtue of the powers conferred upon the Board of Trustees of the University of Scranton by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and by the board delegated to me, I accept the candidates for degrees as they have been recommended, certified, and presented. And in the name of the faculty and board of trustees of this university, admit them to said degrees and proclaim them sons and daughters of the University of Scranton forever. Congratulations. Graduates, on behalf of the faculty and the entire university, I too congratulate you and wish you well. Please be seated. We are now at that part of the ceremony in which each doctoral and master's degree recipient receives his or her diploma from the university. Each graduate will be introduced by Dean Welsh. We ask that you hold your applause until each group of degree candidates has been recognized. Also, each graduate will be photographed by the university's photographer. We ask that you refrain from coming down the aisles to take photos during this time so that the ceremony and the graduates can proceed efficiently. Students will receive a scroll from the hand of the president. They will then proceed to the tables beside the stage where staff from the College of Graduate and Continuing Education will give them their specifically named diplomas. At this time, I would like to ask Dr. Welsh, Dean of the College of Graduate and Continuing Education, uh, to read the regular order of names. It is customary for faculty to place the doctoral hood on the shoulders of those earning the doctoral degree. The hood and the hooding process symbolizes not only the rights but also the responsibilities the awardee is expected to bear. Hooding our doctoral graduates are Dr. John Sanko, Associate Professor of Physical Therapy and Chair of the Occupational and Physical Therapy Department, and Dr. Peter Langer, Associate Professor of Physical Therapy and Director of the Doctoral Program. The following individuals are receiving the degree Doctor of Physical Therapy. Lauren Augar. Melinda Ray Bark.
Hilary Krista Balamo. Jill Marie Brogan. Cynthia Michelle Brennell. Michael Robert Buck. Rochelle Lynn Callahan. Jennifer Ann Chedister. Megan Ann Connolly. Ann Loretta Desenovich. Presenting the diploma will be her sister, Mary Desenovich. Paul Harrison Eberhardt III. Catherine Ann Falls. Michelle Laura Fairheller. Carolyn Marie Fry. James Eugene Gamrat. Teresa Ann Gatuski. Jennifer Lynn Hahn. Timothy James Herring. Jody Lynn Hinman. Michael F. Horn. Perry Arthur Caslow. <laughs> Ashley Ann Krishak. Amy Lauren Kurdick. Karen Krasinski. Kayla Lee Kyle. Nicole M. Lipinski. Casper Paul Andrew Magosh. Jerry Nicole Madonado. Noel McFadden. Alyssa Megna. Taryn Ann Melody. Garrett C. Michaels. Jonathan Stephen McCulloch. Matthew Thomas 
Maar nu komen. Timothy Lawrence Moran. Chelsea Joe Morse. Aaron John Nisnik. Denise M. O'Hara. Curtis Charles Oliveri. Jacqueline Prey. Elizabeth A. Polidal. Krista Marie Sadowski. Mandy Marie Salerno. Karen Elizabeth Spadoni. Devi Serestadada. Gregory J. Sweeney. Catherine Terracone. Elizabeth Catherine Timlin. Alexander S. Walsh. The diploma is being presented by his mother, Rebecca Walsh. Alicia Marie White. This concludes the awarding of the degree Doctor of Physical Therapy. The following individuals are receiving the degree Master of Arts. Basil Banaduk. Matthew Joseph Figured, Jeremy K. Mullen, Colin Anthony Peters, Jr., Chitali D. Raskapur. Andrew George Whitco. This concludes the awarding of the degree Master of Arts. The following individuals are receiving the degree Master of Business Administration. Zane Ibrahim Abdumanan. Sayed Awad Alamari. Walid Khalid Alanzi. Okay. Number, please. Say again. Mara Mohammed El Amarsri.
Mushababi Mawad Akatani. You're definitely not Abdurrahman. <laughs> How about Turkey? Are you no? Okay. <laughs> Megan. Excellent. Great. Okay. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Anscavage. <laughs> Lauren Michelle Anderson. Santhil Kumar Rumugam. Ahmed Zaid Asiri. Stephen Jack Agaba. Robert Barletta. Patrick Charles Barrett. Mia Lenora Barletti. <laughs> John Robert Patrick Bell, Jr. Number, please. Really? Excellent. Brian Vincent Casey. Kathleen Nicole Sino. Sean Martin Clark. Christopher James Corey. Jared Andrew Dinesco. Christian J. Dugan. Barry John Iden. James Peter Ferguson. Camilla Alicia Field. Sharon Tankersley Fiola. No. Number, please. Brian Edward Gaffney. Joan Marie Gaffney. Craig George Gallagher. Nineka Saren Garrel Alder. Hamsa Adele Goshlin. Amy Ann Gillette. Dennis Eugene Grandinetti. Brendan J. Gray. Kevin William Hamilton. Nikisha Lavelle Harris. Jared Roy Hinko. 
Number, please. Brian Keith Holsty. Lynn Sean Holtz. Seanetta Andrea Humphreys. Leif M. Jubai. Stephen Thomas Kofira. Michael Lazarus Cole. Angelina Lucille Kornstadt. Larissa Kroniak Weigold. Ki Hoon Kwan. Darlene Angela Lagardi. Evan Joseph Lucky. Jordan Patrick Linet. Brent Malstedt. Andrew Marsteller. Danielle D. Maslek. Paul N. Imbo. Kevin Michael McLaughlin. Lauren Taylor McMullen Doran. Doreen Vanessa Millick. James Edward Moffat. Christopher Lee Molatoris. Richard William Morgan. Joshua Arnell Morton I. Noble Yu Wugu. Cynthia Ortiz. Daniel Benedetto Parisi. <laughs> Laura Marie Pastori. <laughs> Kelly A. Petherick. <laughs> Rathen Sunil Pilla. Cherokee Pineda. Anthony Joseph Pinto III. Shahid Rahman. Jeffrey Wayne Reeder. Jason Thomas Savino. Blaze Richard Schulteis.
Rashid A. Sheath. Eric Jerome Skorupa. Bernard Slowick. Mark Allen Springer. Jennifer Anna Marie Stamen. Matthew Joseph Tolan. Hyacinth Ioni Tucker. Robert John Tupe. Whitney Marie Euler. Richard Austin Walsh. Michael Leo Wanchaisen. Gerald Scott Welker. William Edward Wyatt III. This concludes the awarding of the degree Master of Business Administration. The following individuals are receiving the degree Master of Health Administration. Ragda Suada Aboali. Jose D. Alicia Rivera. Michael Andrew Aliada. Sonal Ball. Guanjin Bai Ensel. Bawin Darmen Drabai Barat. Timothy L. Carr. Brittany Mary Draco. Danielle S. Kimball. Oh, Daniel, I'm yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I didn't look. <laughs> Pamela Ann Kuntz. Thomas Joseph Mealy. Ritama Pata. Meghna Harish Patel. Michelle Marie Wykwalski. Joseph Michael Scotchless. Denise Antonia Straka. Umi M. Vora. Congratulations. 
This concludes the awarding of the degree Master of Health Administration. The following individuals are receiving the degree Master of Science. Fatima Abdullah. Colleen Marie Akitz. Zainab Abdullah Al Talib. Number, please. 248, 249. Mazin Saeed Ali Akamdi. <laughs> Safaya Hamad Anadi. Mahar Abdurrahman Aradadi. Naturally. 257, thank you. <laughs> you. You don't understand what joy she just gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Christina Nicole Amorisi. Amor Amor I apologize. <laughs> Christina Nicole Amorisi. Caitlin Lynn Rose Ardoino. Iwana Elizabeth Arias Dominguez. Ashley Diane Arroyo. Micah Ash. Emily A. Babayak. Mina Day Annie Bechan. Carrie Ann Jacqueline Belucha. <laughs> Kathleen Teresa Barber. Abigail Nicole Barrett. Jennifer Lynn Batista. Edward Jerome Baumkratz III. Francis Victoria Beck. Kristen Elizabeth Bergman. Sabrina S. Bidding. Susan Walling Bullock. Susan Michelle Brannigan. Roxanne Renee Bersett. Mark Joseph Breyer. Kristen Aaron Brosnan. Lynette Joy Browning. <laughs> Kelly Ann Brzezowski. Judith Juliana Bullard. Tim Eugene Butler. Kelly Ann Kaliuk Calabrese.
Daria Lynn Canta. Michael James Capozzi. Scott Matthew Cardoni. Scott. Shannon Elizabeth Carl. Santina M. Carpenter. Ashley Elizabeth Caesar. Michael James Jehovich. Kelly Ann Clayton. Tara Lynn Connor. Michael Edward Culver. Philip Edward Cunningham. Erin Lynn Courier. Megan A. Davitt. Charles J. Deal III. Matthew DeBias. Dana Jean DeCharo. Stephanie Carol De Laurentiis. <laughs> Anne Cecilia DeMarzio. Denise Elizabeth DeMassey. Arlene Leona DeVino. Meredith Lynn Deal. Christina Marie Denuzo, Brittany Rose DeTringo, yeah. Leah Rose Dorner, Harold Augusta Dakota III, Michael James Dudley, Caitlin Marie Durkin. Joey Jeanette Dyrud. Um, Nicole Daryl Eady. Daly Omar Evans. Jessica. Number please. Karen Sue Finucan. Fin I apologize. Karen Sue Finucan. Rosanna Fiorello. Catherine Lynn Fitzgerald. Megan Amanda Fortner. Kelly Ann Fouts. Janelle France. Danielle Gina Frisella. Jordan Ashley Freed. Anna Fusco. Lauren Garofalo. Emily Ann Gardner. Danielle Lynn Gardner. Derek Gellarmini. Nisa Jihan Garbi. Yeah. 
Renee Susan Givenoli. Caitlin Elizabeth Gluck. Lauren Elizabeth Godek. Maria Jose Estefana Gonzalez Batanco. <laughs> Teresa Susan Grazak. Anne Catherine Gregory, Sarah Elizabeth Gula, Thomas Kevin Hayner, Caitlin Marie Heuser, Dana Marie Hall, Jessica Leah Hanst. Georgina Nicola Harris, Robert Ralph Hasselbach, <laughs> Diane Christine Hauser, Rebecca Louise Henthorn. <laughs> Joy N. W. Hilton. Yashanta Siobhan Holloway. Mary Catherine Holsclaw. Kimberly Ann Holterman. Anna R. Ibrahim. Zenobia Jackson. Paul Joseph Janeski. Neil Kamal Jawar. Peter Barrett Jordan. Shannon Lynn Jordan. Aaron R. Judge. Jill Ann Joku. Lisa M. Jurassic. Jacqueline Marie Kenya. Caitlin Golovitz. Caitlin Ann Kelly. James Arthur Kindler. Robert Christopher King. Caitlin J. Nick, Jennifer Marie Kraft, number please. Caitlin Mar Mary Crowlick, Kathleen Mary Cow Cowlick. Joshua Krupitsky, no. Amanda Rose, 511, wow. Michelle Ann Leyland. Oh, that's right. I apologize. Let's be assisted in, uh, in awarding the diploma is her father, John Sanko. <laughs> Tracy Lee Lytle. <laughs> Jessica Marie Labrizi. Lawrence G. Locker. Virginia Ann Maloney. Nicole Elizabeth Morton. Tyrone Patrice Matthews. 
Daniel Thomas Maurer. Natalie Lynn McBrien. Jillian Bridget McDermott. Jessica Renee Nicole Meese. Soraya Barbosa Mendez. Alicia Lorraine Middleton. Caitlin Marie Miller. Elka Miller. Peter John Miller. Thomas Jefferson Minnick. Megan Elizabeth Mitras. Nicole Therese Molusky. Stephanie Lynn Montale Monteleone. Apologize. Billy Joe Morton. Eugene John Munley. Vincent Joseph Moschello. Number please. Actually, John Henry Nubzadowski, Adrian Florette Nelson, Tressa Ray Newton, Caitlin Elizabeth O'Connor. Karen Arlene Oki. Nathaniel Stephen Olinger. Heather Robin Olekna. She's being awarded her diploma by her mother, Sharon Olekna. Kirsten Audrey Ondich. Anna Paglione. Yeah. Megan Lynn Panovich. Alexandra C. Parlamas. Nikita Patel. Rana Kamara Patel. Stephanie Lynn Patriarco. Caitlin Marie Patulio. Michael James Pedley. John Paul Perot, Kevin Francis Feezy, Jessica Ann Pyatt, Josephine P. Pissot, Jonathan Steven Suholis. Joseph Scott Quails, oh. Kelly Ann Rafferty, Emily M. Rathmel, Catherine Lorraine Reeves, Catherine Joanne Rigby. Jamilet Revis. Woo! 
Diane Marie Robertaza. Alexander Michael Rodriguez. Lily Angel Ross. Kirsten Marie Rosowski. Megan Eileen Ryan. Daniel Charles Sanacor. Get it right this time. Melissa L. Sanko. Diploma is being awarded by her father, John Sanko. <laughs> Andrea Felipa Santos. Patrick Joseph Scanlon III. <laughs> Stephanie Lee Schaefer. K. Brew Faye Schroller. Jean Marie Schappert. Dawn M. Schifino. Michael Joseph Seiler, number please. Matthew Steven Sirinak. Dara T. Shaw. Rajan Vijikamar Shaw. Kathleen Ann Sheridan. Jonathan Edward Siff. <laughs> Kelly Sue Silver. Carolyn Simone. Neil Robert Slocum. Michael J. Sotek. Jacqueline Ann Soto. Elise Catherine Soulier. Lindsay Helene Spake. Probably Helena, right? Spack. I apologize. Lisa Jean Spinelli. LaShawn Michelle Stitt. Sheila M. Strickland. The diploma is being presented by her sister, Rebecca Walsh. <laughs> Liana Jean Salt. Allison Cora Summers. Adam Michael Sadlowski. The diploma is being presented by his brother, Stephen Sadlowski. <laughs> Beth Ann Terry. Danielle Agnes Ty. Kristen Travis. Joel Aloysius Strinsky. Dana Alexander Utter. Molly Loren Vida. Francesca Marie Waldron. 
Brendan Patrick Walker. Mark August Wasselchuk. Patty Michelle White. Stephanie L. Williams. George Joseph Wolke. The diploma is being presented by his godfather, Vince Riley, a member of the trustees. Kelly Ann Wolf. <laughs> Jessica Lee Wright. Megan Marie Yeckel. Kathleen Lynn Yershak. Melissa Lynn Sapke. That concludes the end of the Masters of Science. <laughs>you need to know, these two folks standing here gave me great pause because I'm thinking, I have nobody left with an MS that has an awardee. And I'm thinking, what's going on here? So, thank you. The following individuals are receiving the degree Masters of Science in Nursing. Mary Beatrice R. Masler. The diploma is being presented by her mother, Mary Ann Masler. Elaine Morrison. Lisa A. Moser. Elena Maria Sanfilippo. Karen C. Savage. Sajin Mary Theckel. Patricia N. Zawiskluck. This concludes the awarding of the degree, Master of Science in Nursing. Ladies and gentlemen of the graduate class of 2012, the largest graduate student graduating class in the university's history, on behalf of the staff at the College of Graduate and Continuing Education and the faculty, staff, and administration of the University of Scranton, please accept our warmest congratulations. Please stand, take a bow. Please be seated. It is now time to recognize those individuals whose performance as a graduate student has been deemed outstanding. The criteria for selecting the recipients of this award include academic achievements, research activities, professional behavior, and contributions to the mission of the University of Scranton. So call your name, please come forward to receive your recognition from Dr. Howell Barely, Provost of the University of Scranton. Megan Ann Connolly, Physical Therapy. Andrew George Whitco, History. Marwa Mohammed El Amasri, Management Information Systems. Stephen J. Ogamba, Marketing. 
Brian Vincent Casey, Accounting. Sean Martin Clark, Enterprise Resource Planning. Joan Marie Gaffney, Marketing. Ki Hoon Kwan, Finance. Jason Thomas Savino, General Business. Jeanette Thomas, General Business. Pamela Ann Coons, Health Administration. Christina Nicole Amrisi, Occupational Therapy. Jennifer Lynn Batista, Educational Administration. Roxanne Renee Bressett, Elementary Education. Lynette Joy Browning, Early Childhood Education. Danielle Gina Frisella, Rehabilitation Counseling. Nisa Gihan Garbi, Community Counseling. Lauren Elizabeth Godick, English as a Second Language. Robert Ralph Hasselbeck, Biochemistry. Kate Lynn Kaglovitz, School Counseling. Robert Christopher King, Software Engineering. Michelle Ann Leyland, Curriculum and Instruction. Elka Miller, Secondary Education. Alexandra C. Parlamas, Special Education. Molly Lauren Vitta, Reading Education. Elaine Morrison, Adult Health Nursing. For many of you, of you, this graduation ceremony represents the, ah, represents the culmination of your academic activity. And yet, if we look at the definition of the word commencement, what it, we find that it means that it means to enter upon, to initiate formally, to begin to be, to begin. So today, while we honor your accomplishments, we also bid you well as you begin the next stage in your life's journey. Congratulations, one and all. So, you cheered when I told you it was the largest ever class. So here we are, congratulations to everyone. And let me make sure I'm in the right spot since it's been so long. Uh, yes, we all know, don't we, that pursuing a degree is a team effort. So with the spouses, children, parents, grandparents, and significant others of the graduates, please stand. <laughs> graduates, give them a hand and extend our sincerest thanks for all of that support. And finally, to the faculty and to the staff of the university, on behalf of myself and the graduates, I extend our deepest appreciation for all that you have done, dedicating yourselves to educating, helping, and mentoring these fine scholars in the pursuit of their careers and dreams. Would the university's faculty and staff here please, please rise. Every one of you has played a part in making today a reality for our graduates, and we thank you. 
I now introduce to you the president of the Alumni Society, Mr. Thomas J. Gretsch of the class of 1984, who will induct the new graduates into the Alumni Society. Mr. Gretsch. Good afternoon. I have a five-year-old and a nine-year-old. I think I'll be working as long as Mr. Meyer's uh, mother-in-law to pay for college. <laughs> Father Quinn, distinguished guests and honorees, members of the administration and faculty, families, friends, and finally, the class of 2012. It is my pleasure to greet you today on behalf of your alumni society. Scranton is a great university. As proof, I need only to cite the distinction and success of our alumni. We as a community, we're over 45,000 strong who you'll be find ready to greet you throughout the nation and throughout the 56 countries around the world. For those of you who are already members of this community of alumni, welcome back. You have once again made your alma mater proud. For those of you who are graduating from Scranton for the first time, it's my privilege to induct you into the Alumni Society of the University of Scranton and declare you eligible for all the rights and privileges of the society. You are Scranton alumni, Jesuit alumni, and as such, I call on you to keep strong the bonds of friendship that you forged here through your years of study. I also call on you to take an active part in your alumni society, which is sustained through our common devotion to alma mater. And so while the university bids you a fond farewell, the alumni society extends you a heartfelt welcome. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Gretsch. I now have the pleasure of presenting to you the President of the University of Scranton, the Reverend Kevin P. Quinn of the Society of Jesus, who will offer concluding remarks. Father Quinn. Distinguished guests, family and friends, member of faculty and staff, and most importantly, the 2012 graduates of the Panuska College of Graduate and Continuing Education, all I can say to you, wow, we finally made it. <laughs> to the graduates of 2012, congratulations on a job very well done. As a first year president, I am thrilled to celebrate with you this special day. We here today champion your many academic accomplishments. We appreciate your resolution and perseverance required by post-baccalaureate education, and we wish you well. But before departing and going our separate ways, I get the final word. The final, and I would say, brief. But before that brief word, I want to just echo what Provost Bailey has already uh, mentioned. Let's uh, invite the graduates yet again in salute, saluting spouses, children, family, and friends who sacrifice and support during years of study simply cannot be underestimated. Thank you. Also allow me to acknowledge my good friend, Maury Myers, whom the university has honored with a doctorate of Laws Honoris Causa. I want to thank Maury for his very inspiring commencement address. You heard about Maury's many accomplishments in, degree, in his degree citation. May I simply add, in my brief time here at Scranton, I have met few residents of this valley more committed to our common good and well-being than Maury and his wife, Sondra. Maury, thank you for letting us honor you today and for embodying our university's highest ideals and aspirations. Thank you. <laughs> now to the class of 2012. One final word. The University of Scranton claims to provide a superior transformational learning experience, preparing students who, in the words of St. Ignatius Loyola, will set the world on fire. What universities claim to be teaching their students 
specifically to think critically, to reason analytically, to solve problems, and to communicate clearly is necessary but not sufficient for the University of Scranton. It is clear to me that our university asks more of you. You were challenged to make Ignatius's charge to love and serve in all things your own. This is the value added of a Scranton graduate education, and this we are justly proud. Today, as we've been told, the university is awarding the largest number of DPT degrees and master's degrees in our history. Dear graduates, I trust you will conduct your professional and personal lives not only with competence, but with compassion. Remember that you are sons and daughters of the University of Scranton forever. God bless you, and God bless the University of Scranton. Thank you. Thank you, Father Quinn. Would you all now please stand for the benediction to be given by Ms. Catherine Seymour, the university minister. Loving God, as members of this Jesuit university community, you call each of us to be men and women for others always striving to grow in our faith that does justice. Help us to continue developing your gifts of wisdom and knowledge so that we may become ever more people who use our gifts and talents in the service of justice. Empower us to bring our passion and our compassion to a world that needs leaders who are thoughtful, wise, and collaborative. And so we pray today on the Feast of Pentecost when God sent the Holy Spirit to be a source of wisdom and strength for all believers. Spirit of wisdom, today the University of Scranton sends out into the world these outstanding and gifted masters and doctors. Like the apostles, may they be able to hear and to speak the words of wisdom that those they serve need to hear. You are wisdom and truth, O Lord. Keep their vision clear and their minds open so that they may respond with generous hearts in justice and in truth to the needs of those before them. You are love and compassion, O Lord. Continue to stir their minds to curiosity and their hearts to compassion, that they might be fully alive as they go forth to build your kingdom. You are God of many gifts and of new beginnings, O Lord. Even as we celebrate in joy and in gratitude for the many ways these graduates have enriched our University of Scranton community, we ask that you bless them abundantly and inspire them unfailingly to works of great love and lives of great hope. Bless us all with the peace and the wisdom you grace to the world. And now we go forth to set the world aflame as we live each day in the name of the God who creates us, the Son who saves us, and the Most Holy Spirit who graces us and sustains us always. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mrs. Seymour. Please remain standing for the singing of the alma mater, which you will find printed in the commencement program. At the conclusion of the alma mater, please remain at your places while the stage party, the faculty, and the graduates proceed with the recessional. You may meet the graduates outside the building. We invite you to attend the reception for our graduates, which is being held behind the estate on the Alumni Memorial Green, which is basically down the commons and on your left at the intersection. Let us now sing our alma mater, led by Ms. Cheryl Boga and the University Singers. <laughs> 